Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, Zambia's opposition leader has been charged with trying to overthrow the government. Akainde Hichilema was arrested last week after his convoy refused to move out of the way of the president's motorcade. His party says he's being politically persecuted. We head to Nairobi to take a look at the first treatment program for drug addicts in East Africa. NGOs hope to encourage the government to follow suit and expand on the number of centres available. And Taste of a Township, a chef in one of South Africa's biggest slums, tries to shake up the tastes of a community by tra combining traditional tastes with healthier ingredients. But first, Zambia's opposition leader, Hakainda Hichilema, has been charged with trying to overthrow the government. He was arrested last week on suspicion of treason after he allegedly endangered President Edgar Lungu's life when his convoy refused to give way to the leader's motorcade. Now, Hichilema's UPND party accuses the government of political persecution. On Tuesday, the initial charges related to the driving incident were changed and the treason charges now apparently apply to acts committed between last October and this April. Lunga's narrowly beaten Hichilema in two past presidential elections. For a closer look at what's going on here, we're joined by Daniel Tonga. Daniel, so the grounds for the treason charges seem to have drastically changed since last week. What's Hichilema supposed to have done to try and overthrow the government in the most recent allegations? Well, uh, first of all, let me hasten to say that uh, there are a lot of ingredients to treason in the Constitution under the Penal Code, uh, but mainly what constitutes treason in the main is the unlawful attempts to overthrow the government uh, by force or unlawful means, uh, or any attempts to set up uh, an independent state in any party of the country uh, through secession. Or it could be that uh, maybe any person who incites or assists any person to invade Zambia with armed forces or attempts to procure by force alteration of the law or policies of government. Uh, these are the issues actually that really does uh, constitute a treason. Uh, and I must hasten to say that uh, Hakainde Hichilema and five others, when they appear today at the Lusaka Magistrate Court, uh, did not take plea because they believe that uh, whatever they did uh, did not actually constitute treason. Uh, and the lawyers actually raised a lot of preliminary issues on the charge. And uh, that's the reason why plea could not, uh, 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 that's the reason why they could not take plea. And the matter has actually been adjourned. So the UPND has been clear that it thinks that the grounds for Chilema arrest were flimsy in the first place and said all, it's all politically motivated. Is that viewpoint widely shared amongst Zambians? Uh, let me say that uh, people are looking at the arrest of Haka Inde Hitler, president of the United Party for National Development, as a move by uh, President uh, Edgar Lungu to silence Haka Inde Hitler who has been a critical voice and bitter political rival of the incumbent president. Uh, and uh, since the 2016 elections, Mr. Hitler has refused to recognize the incumbent president on grounds that he stole the presidential elections. Uh, the, the, the good example is the refusal to recognize uh, Edgar Lungu as the duly elected uh, the president of Zambia. And this is actually that uh, made... Uh, Haka in the Hitler of the UPND uh, to refuse to give way uh, when they were heading for a traditional ceremony in the western uh, part of Zambia. And according to police, this action by Haka in the Hitler had put uh, the president's life in danger. And um, they, according to the police, they're believing that um, President Haka in the Hitler should be charged with treason. And uh, they think that he did commit treason. So when you look at this issue, actually, it has brought uh, a lot of different perspectives. There are those that believe that Mr. Haka in the Hitler did uh, commit an offense of treason, but then there are those that feel that uh, this charge is just something that they're trying to, pers uh, to persecute him. Thank with. you very much. Daniel Tonga there for us in Lusaka. Look at some news in brief now. 13 UN staff are taken hostage by 100 unarmed Sudanese re refugees in Goma, eastern DR Congo. Many of the refugees living at the Manigi base are former fighters for South Sudanese President Rik Machar who fear returning home. They're demanding to be moved to a third country. Libyan fishermen found the bodies of 28 migrants who appeared to have died of thirst and hunger after their boat broke down 
off the coast of Sabrata. The victims were buried in a cemetery for illegal migrants in the city on Tuesday. Smugglers often pack people in, hoping to make it to Europe onto flimsy dinghies. Libya has become the main departure point for African migrants. On Tuesday, 170 people from Mali were deported from Libya as it struggles to cope with the influx. A French soldier is on trial here in Paris on charges of molesting two young girls in 2015 while serving in Burkina Faso. Prosecutors say 40-year-old Sebastian L filmed himself whilst abusing the girls, who are three and five years old, in a pool in Ouagadougou in 2015. Prosecutors have asked for six months no bail and 18 months suspended sentence. At the time, he was serving in France's Operation Barkhane, which saw soldiers deployed in anti-extremist efforts throughout the Sahel, including Burkina Faso, Chad and Mali. Now, Kenya has one of the highest rates of intravenous drug use in the world. That brings with it a high risk of users catching HIV and hepatitis. International health workers have stepped in to try and offer addicts a treatment program that aims to slow down the spread of illness associated with drug use. Our correspondents report. Picking up old syringes to prevent the spread of AIDS and hepatitis, this is one of the missions of the Doctors of the World team in Nairobi. Three times a week, the team visits the Karangwari slum, where many addicts live. Users can be found shooting heroin in vacant lots. But now they've learned to decrease the risk to their overall health. Through MDM, through going through training, harm reduction, that's where I learned how to, 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 to prepare my things in a safe way. Drug users are stigmatized here and often lack access to doctors. Few think to be screened for diseases, unaware of the risks of infection and epidemic. It's a population that needs to be encouraged and uh, to be facilitated to be able to, up, to take up the services that are offered in the hospitals. Addicts with AIDS are eligible for care in public institutions, but there are no services for those affected by hepatitis C, even though 30 percent of drug users carry hep C. Doctors of the World and Doctors Without Borders founded the first center in East Africa to provide heroin users with access to free medicine. This man has come to the clinic daily for over two weeks to receive treatment. The medications for hepatitis C here in Africa, they're not very readily available. So what we do, what MSF is doing, is able to lobby for hepatitis C medication. These NGOs hope the government will follow their lead and fund national drug it's treatment uh, centers. Health workers say there's an urgent need for an expansion of services to prevent potentially devastating epidemics among a high-risk population. Well, a chef in one of South Africa's biggest slums is trying to shake up the tastes of the community. She's combining traditional flavors and dishes with a healthy twist in a bid to encourage locals to make healthier choices. Take a look. This restaurant is in the heart of Cape Town's Kayalicha Township. Chef Abigail Balo Mokoena offers residents a more balanced diet using local ingredients. She wanted to improve eating habits in townships ever since her brother died of diabetes-related complications 10 years ago. It's um, fused, yes, with the European influences into it, but um, the uh, main elements on the dish that speak out will always be uh, element that speaks South African. This dish is called bunny chow, a meat stew mixture poured into a loaf of bread. And this is runaway chicken, an organic chicken cooked with a spicy sauce. Her customers are enthralled. The cooking style and uh, the atmosphere, it's um, from way back when, it took me back um, since my grandmother's days. It's common things that we eat daily, but she's made it very differently with very much taste. It is one of the best butter chicken that one hand have. So I, I found it very delicious. It is not too spicy. It is something that will, will fill you up as well. Abigail wants to open more restaurants in South Africa and abroad. Traveling to any country and be able to order South African as you would be anywhere in the world and order Chinese. I would like to see that. Her many fans will be glad to hear that the chef who is reinventing traditional South African food is also planning to release a cookbook. Hmm, dinner time. Is it dinner time? I hope so. Well, that's it, though, for Eye on Africa. Thanks very much for watching us and do so again if you can. Take care.
France 24 is getting ready to bring you all the action from the French presidential election. Stay informed of all the developments with our reports, debates and analysis. The outcome could have implications across the world. First round, April 23rd. Second round, May 7th. Follow the French presidential election on France 24 